Hello, and welcome. I'm Zinder, and this is some APB Reloaded. But this isn't just going to be a standard mission episode like the ones I've done of the past. Uh, the idea of this one, it's a veteran's look at APB. The growth and, well, the... It's growths and its failures. Like, for example, since my last video, which is quite a long while ago, They've added in, you know, a new anti-cheat, they have fair fight, they still have Punk Buster on top of that. Not 100% sure as to why for that one, but what are you going to do? They've attempted to balance certain guns, add new features, refine old features, but... Oh. Wow. But, unfortunately, there's still a lot of glaring issues. Issues that constantly drive people away from the game, and... It's one of the reasons why, over the past, I don't know, year, something like that, I've been taking extremely long breaks. There's just major issues with the game that have persisted since its release, and no things have been done to undo it. And if you may have been seeing there, there's another issue that's cropped up lately. The one where I just saw that guy through the building over there. And... There's not a whole lot that can be done about that. Like, the the current state of the game is in a sort of transitional period between trying to be something and just being shit. Like, there's a lot of issues, like right now, for some odd reason, it hates me recording, and, oh, and apparently it's having one of those random lag fluctuation days as well, which, they happen. They still haven't sorted out all of the issues with the state of server performance and latency. As you can see right now, you see where it says the S33 milliseconds? That is basically the frame time of the server. 33 milliseconds is what it's supposed to be running at, which is roughly 30 frames per second, which isn't great, but it's been acceptable lately for shooter games. Fence is not actually there. That's another fun little bug that's always persisted and hasn't gone away yet. Uh, but as you can see, the number above it, it can't maintain that. While the actual client performance for people with actual computers is generally fine, except for it has these little mini freezes when I'm recording, which is actually something that's been an issue ever since they tried their own internal anti-cheat they supposedly added. Which, if that still exists, that means there's currently three anti-cheats in the game. Which... is... completely pointless, for one. Because the only one of them that actually does anything... is Fair Fight. Because every other anti-cheat is bypassable, and the only thing it causes issues with is regular stuff. But then there's the exploit that's been around called quick switching where you switch from your secondary to the nhvr 762 and basically you kill somebody in the time to kill of basically the lowest time to kill weapon in the game if it landed every single shot the thing is you only need to land two one sidearm hit with either the Act 44 or the RSA, or even the 45 because there's the Colby 45 that's been added, and then switch to your primary sniper rifle with your three-point sling attachment and kill them. It's really just that simple. All you have to do is land two shots in a row. Now, the thing is, is macroing, macroing has been mostly removed from the game, but like, stuff like quick switching can still be macroed, and it is, because Fair Fight can't detect that kind of macroing. Because it's not detecting consistent fire rates. It's detecting, you know, it, it's not a consistent fire rate, it's a weapon switch. There's nothing for it to really properly detect there. But, 
Oh, well. And then there's concussion grenades. Now, the idea of these grenades is just annoying. They used to one-shot a long time ago, now they had removed that because, you know, obviously getting one hit by a grenade is just annoying. Their idea of nerfing that, though? Make it do 990 damage. 99% of your health on a direct hit. And a direct hit is actually really easy to do. And on top of that, they can pretty much one-hit any vehicle. The end result? The best grenade in the game. Now, the thing is, is what's the point of having all the other grenades if that one grenade serves all purposes? But they won't change it. And, well, honestly, any they don't want to change anything. Any single time people complain about balance, they just ignore it. The two king weapons that have consistently been around and been overly strong since the beginning of the game, the HVR and the NTEC-5, are both exactly in the same state as they were. And they actually keep making reskins of these weapons because they're the best weapons. So you make a reskin and it will sell because it's a good weapon. Whereas, you know, less than stupidly overpowered weapons you know, guns like the DMR or, you know, guns of that level never see a single reskin. The closest thing they get is a variant weapon, such as the ISSR, that is somehow managed to be even shittier than the gun that is modified off of. So, APB is a game that should be good, but it has glaring downsides that are the one thing not, like, even remotely addressed by the developers. Like this right here, what you're seeing with this guy jumping and shooting with a shotgun. There's actually people that believe you should not be able to jump and shoot at the same time at all, because let's face it, there's no way you would ever be able to do that. And this is what I mean by, like, getting hit by the HVR. Now, I think that one was a scout. But the actual HVR, you get hit by... Yeah, that one was a scout. You get hit by the actual HVR, you can't do anything. You've just lost 85% of your health. Just about any single gun in the game will kill you. And, it, you know, there has... You know, there's been good things added. Like I said, there's been fair fight. They've, you know, they addressed what the scout was, and they mostly removed its jump shotting capabilities and stuff like that. But, like... This gun right here, instead of buffing the star and making the star better and then just making this a reskin, instead, they made a variant of the star, the starter rifle, that is... It, it's... See, like, right there. I just got shot by a full HVR. What's that mean? I'm out of the fight. If I were to run out there, anybody could hit me, and I would die. So, yeah, it's, a, it's very ranty. What I'm doing is very ranty, because... These are things that have persisted and have not been had balance to them. There was a period of the game where there was guns that were released into the game that... Oh, steam overlay is now up. Where... Why is this happening? I just want to look at this. And I didn't really do anything because I was talking and not paying attention. But, like, there was a period of the time where there was the OCA Nano. It was a sidearm. In fact, I have one. And it was... It was stupidly strong. Like, granted, it got hit really hard when they brought in the range changes that made it so you couldn't, you know, kill people from across the map with just about any gun because the minimum damage didn't mean anything. It got hit pretty hard by that, but so did all secondaries. But then the Nano had received other changes and whatnot, and it got brought in line. The thing is... The balance point with that was, it's a tradable gun, so you can buy it off the in-game marketplace. But, that's... It doesn't change the fact that somebody can spend a ton of money on the game just by spamming these boxes to get something, and if the gun is stupidly strong at the time, that's pay to win. And even the Colby 45, like I have right now, it is, aside from the NFA 9, which is really only capable of hitting its TTK when standing directly behind somebody, like 
with the gun in their head. It is pretty much one of the fastest killing secondaries in the game. And the only way to acquire it? The Armus Marketplace. Now yes, you can get a trial from Joker tickets, but the Joker ticket trials, they're nearly impossible to sustain. And if you do, you can only sustain one at a time. So, there's glaring issues with the game. You see, you know, I'm fine with a bunch of weapon reskins being in Armus, but then, like, I spawn my truck here, and the truck is... Uh, I'm stuck with the same things that I've had, yet they've released... Well, I can't really bring that up because you won't see it. They've released, like, three or four kits for the Vegas G20. They've released multiple kits for the Jericho, the Bashada, the Pioneer. The, I think the Jeep has only really seen one real kit for the most part. And that's another thing, like... A lot of the kits and a lot of the weapons they've released, like the newest gun in the newest pack, the, as they call it, Case the KO, which is, it was marketed as not being an A-Leg, but they give you the stats and you compare the stats to an A-Leg and it is actually the identical weapon. If you actually go look at the old trailers, the old trailers for APB, I'm talking, if you find one of the ones from like 2004 for the original APB, you look very, very closely at the end of the video. The new A-Lig is an old model. A model that's been in the game for 10 years. And they're marketing it as a brand new weapon. There's been very few changes to the game as a whole. Like... If you look at the other videos I drive around the city, nothing's really different. A lot of the same exploit camping spots are still there. There's ones that have been patched, and they always do a poor job of it, and there's always, people always find ways around their patching. So, that doesn't really help. Now, lately they've come up with their own little new system called the Out of Bound System which is the first thing I can really think of as like a good reference point would be like Battlefield or oh what's another game that I played that had airplanes in it and shooting uh, oh. I'm trying to remember because it was a game where I could not fly the airplanes to save my life oh planet side I think it was. Although I'm not entirely sure if it was just that. But whenever you go outside of areas where they want you to be able to be, you... You know, it pops up a thing saying, do this, or you'll be basically forced murdered by the game. That's been their answer. They just mark areas as out of bounds, and it seems to be buggy in this. Because... There are certain areas that are obviously not out of bounds. There was actually one that was reported on the forums that I saw. And... Where? I don't know if I can actually recreate it. I don't even know if it wasn't perhaps maybe even fixed in today's patch, but that's unlikely. Oh, actually, I just thought of another bug. Another one that I had personally reported six months ago. I think it was six months. It might have actually been more than that now that I think about it. And I think it's actually still here. Right here. You see this? You can actually see the whole way through into that other room. And only can you see through. But... You see where my bullets are landing? If I go through and I kick this door... Well, I guess there's no bullet holes here, but you can shoot people in this room through that hole. And I reported that, and I, you know, proved the fact that you could shoot through that at least six months ago. And guess what? It's still there. And this is what I mean. Like, that's easily exploitable. I personally have been killed by somebody abusing that. And it's it's stupid, because they claim to be working on the engine upgrade, and I'm sure news of it has been around, you know, because they announced they're working on that. I think... 
I think that was over a year ago. And we haven't really seen anything of it. There's been a few new interface features and whatnot. And their original, you know, they, they put out a date. Oh, by quarter one, 2014. And the thing about that was, quarter one, 2014, you know what happened? Nothing. Their response was, oh, this one we were prepared, that's when we, our goal was to have the internal test. See, here's the, here's the issue with how buggy it is. It's so buggy, you can't even guaranteed reproduce it. But it, it was, from as far as I could tell, right there, it was, they would say you are out of bounds, and if you don't move, it will force despawn you. Simply because you wanted to take cover behind an air duct, and you got unlucky, and it decided to be dysfunctional at that time. But, nothing has really been seen in the engine upgrade. There's been a few new video options, and this is about as much of scale form as we've seen, despite that being announced even before the engine upgrade. And, you don't really get anything. Like, you can disable a few options, and yes, my game is incredibly bright right now, because... I had Bloom and Trilinear Milk Filtering disabled before I start started recording. Because this is what I was playing with. And you may be wondering, why would I subject myself to this? And... The reason why? With their latest Halloween patch, they implemented these shader things to blur out the game and stuff. And with it came... Well... Basically, Real Time Worlds era... Hyper Bloom, or Super Bloom, or Extreme Bloom, whatever you want to call it, where it's just completely ridiculous. Like, if I come in here and I stand by this, it's like, oh, you know, what's the issue? Everything looks fine. But, say I go in here and I disable, or I re enable Bloom, it's, it's pretty bad. Like, you can see. Well, it's not so extreme right now, but if you're wearing something white, like actually, I've, I have an outfit with a white shirt, which should show it off to the maximum extreme. Come on. Oh, sure, sure. The moment I actually want to show it, it doesn't happen. What if I enable this? Sure, the one time. I want to show it. It doesn't happen. Like, if I get it really close, you can see it there. The blurry edge. And... If you disable Bloom, it's gone. But, the only problem with disabling Bloom is... Now the whole world's dark. And when you increase it, you lose saturation. So... All in all, I still think I prefer the way Bloom Off looks. It looks better. But, you're not even allowed to, like, there was shader edits and stuff before, and I know they've, you know, said that at the beginning of next year, January 1st, you know, editing the shader files will be bannable, which, you know, there's a lot of good things that come out of that, but the bad things is, is there's actually shader packs designed to improve performance and deal with the stupidity of, like, the hyperbloom and whatnot. And... All you can really do now is disable it. I mean, there's config options. You might be able to increase the saturation in config. My my way of dealing with the saturation issue, I use my monitor. I have a game mode setting, which gives me increased sharpness and increased uh, saturation. And I use it on a lot of different games. And pretty soon... I'm going to lose even more color because I ordered a new pair of glasses because I accidentally broke my last ones and I'm going to get, they, they have a special anti-blue coating to help deal with eye fatigue and it's going to make the game look even worse but it's this or characters are surrounded by, you know, when they're wearing bright colors, a sort of annoying look and it's not just that, like there's a lot of other things to do it. And they had removed Fog at one point because one of the people that was developing the game at the time said, oh, we thought everybody hated Blue. You know, the, he was like, oh, nobody likes or, nobody likes the Fog and removed the Fog. And when they brought it back, everybody was like, we love the Fog. 
well, why isn't it here to stay? And they were like, well, we thought, you know, nobody liked it. Because one of the developers that no longer works for the game, one of their art guys, did what he thought was good and not what the community wanted. And there there always be people of the community that hate aspects of the game. That's just a sheer fact. But whenever a thread starts on the forums and 80% of the people posting in it agree, generally you might want to... Like, we're not talking, you know, major things, but like, say, slight tweaks to the end tech so it's just not the stupidest assault rifle ever. And, you know, changes to the HVR so getting hit by one doesn't effectively kill you even if it doesn't. In a lot of cases, getting hit by the HVR, dying would be faster than waiting to recover. And then, the the elective spawn system. When that was originally announced, I sent a message to one of the lead developers, who also is no longer a part of the game, a part of the development company, the, 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 the development of the game, and told him, this could be easily abused to pinpoint the lo general locations of enemies and relay it to your team over voice chat or even text if you really wanted to. And he went, oh, I don't see how that could be a thing. And guess what? To this day, me and the people I play with, and probably everybody else in the game, abuse the fact that when a circle goes red on the spawn map, you can say, the spawn to this direction has gone red. There is enemies somewhere nearby. And it works without fail. They implemented their own sort of a death, you know, hack, where when you're dead, you can know the locations of the enemies. And it's stupid. And mobile spawn points, which you won't be able to see it here, but mobile spawn points themselves are stupid. But then further, you can see them, you can see your enemies' mobile spawn points anywhere on the map. So when you're driving, if you're in a VIP mission and you're one of those fucking assholes that runs away in a car in a VIP mission, if your enemies are driving a mobile spawn point, you can see where they are. And you can actively avoid them just by having somebody looking at the map. While I understand the idea of wanting to improve the map and make the map better, it hasn't happened. There's been aspects of the game that are just worse. Mobile spawn points were possibly one of the dumbest things to introduce because people do things like put it in a steel plating 3 Pioneer. And you're never going to destroy that with light infantry weapons. And you need to use both of your grenades to actually kill it, even with conks. Even a satchel charge, which is a deployable that was introduced for the sole purpose of destroying vehicles, cannot one-hit a Pioneer. So, the, the only saving grace of that is that steel plating 3 does not work versus explosives, but it doesn't matter, because you get vehicles like the Pioneer and the Espacio, and, you know, they can already survive any explosive in the game. Combine that with the fact that people have access to Blowtorch to repair vehicles, and it doesn't matter. None of it matters anymore. And then... A lot of the people that actually still remain in the game that aren't people being constantly banned by Fair Fight for cheating are people that exploit. Like, there's a bug with the game where certain doors you can see through and you can see enemy name tags and a lot of the time, you can shoot through those. Is it an exploit? Yes. Is it bannable? Yes. But it's been in the game for four years, at least, and it still hasn't been fixed. So, as a veteran player of the game, there's a lot of major issues with the game that have been completely ignored in favor of... Oh, I just, there I go trying to open up Armas to show you something. You can't. But there's, there hasn't been a whole lot of content added for free players. And there's not even really been real content added for paying players. There's been a whole lot of really nothing added to the game. And even still, like, the funnest event they've added yet, the Christmas event in Beacon, the 12 Deaths of Christmas, 
was ruined because they brought back the snowball fight and forced it into that district. You were forced to play it if you were in that district. So, while you're trying to do the fun Christmas event, you get stuck with the terrible one that has effectively no rewards at all, and nobody likes. The only people that actually like that are the developers, and I don't even think they like it. I think they just say that they like it because they don't, you know, want to admit that they've done anything wrong. But that's a common problem with all developers, but... 25 minutes of me ranting about APB, the current state of it, the past of it, and how things progressed over the years. All I have to say is... It hasn't... It hasn't progressed. APB has not progressed. Oh, and then there's that. That right there. That's another extremely annoying thing they've added. They've added in these activity things. Okay, you see the butcher weapon carrier thing? But I'm not in a mission, and I haven't opted to participate in that event. But he was still allowed to just kill me. But I don't want nothing to do with this event. But you know what? Now that I've died as part of the event, I might receive rewards for participating in the event, even though I had not. And the, the events themselves, they're abusable, because, like, the drug mule event. You go, you you mug one drug mule, you deliver the stuff to a contact, and then you just go about your regular mission business. When the event ends, you get paid out. Why? Because you participated. That's it. And the whole point of it? To provide you the deployables. The deployables that can have very game-changing effects, like Blowtorch. Well, no, Blowtorch is an activatable mod, but, like... The deployables of... Come on. Med spray. Instantly reactivates, you know, instantly triggers healing. And... Yeah. And resupply boxes. You place them down and people can refill from them. Now, enemies can refill from them as well, but... Eh. Epinephrine, which allows you to move... Stupidly fast, especially when combined with fragile, but it destroys your health bar basically. But then you got mobile cover, which it's a pain to destroy. Then you got your satchel charges, and then boombox, which is meant to emulate, you know, gunfire on the radar, it puts up a red triangle, but you have to be playing music out of it. And you can hear the music. So, it doesn't serve any real purpose, except for distracting new players to the game. So, they've taken a game that's already punishing to new players. Oh, look. The Christmas random weapon thing. This is, this is another thing they've added. The thing is, in order to get those boxes, in order to get those event rewards... You have to actually get within the top, I think it's 30% of the new 12 Deaths of Christmas event in Beacon, which has a series of lighting bugs right now. Like, a lot that just annoy me. But in order to get into the top 30%, you either have to be in a dead district and do trading, which they've already said that, you know, kill trading. Anybody that does it during the event will ban you. Or you have to be good at the game. People that are legitimately not that great at the game, especially new players, they have no chance in hell of completing and getting either of the event rewards, really. I mean, you could get the Far Vanguard, which is this gun, from the points of the, uh, not that one, Deck, yeah, Deck the Halls, but it's going to take you a very long time, because you need 50,000 points in order to get it. And, like, the earlier guns, they only need you, like, 100 points. You need to get 500 kills over the course of 12 days as a new player, basically. And there's some, like, end-of-mission points, but those don't really mean anything, because there's not sides. It's a free-for-all event. The amount of points you got in it, as far as I'm aware, is equivalent to the amount of points that you got, really. Like, your assists, your kills... That's pretty much all of your points, plus maybe a couple hundred. So, I'm, 
I don't know. I'm going to call this good here. I, I think I've made my point with this rant, but the thing is, I could have tried to be civilized about it, but let's be honest. Sometimes it's just good to have a nice, big rant about a game, and I haven't even covered everything that I dislike with the game, but I think I've covered enough. And this has gone on long enough. I think my point is here, and you might just think I'm mad. You know, people that think that will think that. And whatever. But, you know, I'll let you make, a, make of it what you will. I've provided nothing but the truth, albeit in a very angry tone. And I leave it up to you to decide whether or not you think the game has improved as a whole, or has done nothing, or even gotten worse. But I'm going to leave you here, and I will see you guys next time. Have a good day.